at the moment we have a working game we have a platform we have a player and we have a portal that allows the player to reach the next level at the moment though the game is more of a puzzle it's just simply a case of can you get to the portal uh, by moving the player around what we need to do is to add an element of danger we need to add an enemy or an obstacle in some way that will cause the player to suffer a penalty so if they uh, manage to touch the enemy or the enemy catches them the player should be sent right back to the very beginning and that will reduce the chance of the player being able to complete the level now there are two main ways we can add an enemy uh, we can either add an actual enemy like a character that's moving around the platform or we could add some physical danger like spikes or lava so I'm going to start off by creating uh, lava, which will send the player back to the beginning. And I'm going to add some lava on the floor in this area just here. Now, importantly, I can't just add that to the costume for um, the platform, because if I add lava, if I draw lava in here, it's simply going to be part of the platform and we can't treat it as something that's separate. We want something different to happen when the player touches the lava. So if we want something different to happen to what happens when the player touches the platform, we need a new sprite. So what I'm going to do is click on the uh, paint tool here, and I'm simply going to uh, draw out a uh, red uh, lava rectangle. So let's have that as a nice bright red rectangle. Uh, let's just uh, draw that out along here now I'm drawing it on the bottom of course I don't actually want it on the bottom it'll be right around this midpoint here but it doesn't matter where I start drawing it it'll be a case of uh, moving it all into position once I finish drawing it so we don't have an outline there so that's fine uh, so let's get the paintbrush now and uh, just put some orange blobs on it so let's put some orange dots just uh, here let's just increase that slightly up to about 20 and we'll just do some little sort of dots here um, the thing with uh, with drawing sprites is that you don't have to worry too much about making it look fantastic to begin with this is uh, a little bit lame I'm not really worried too much about the sprites in my game at the moment it's more a case of just getting something there that will work and then later on, uh, we can uh, go back and, and edit the sprites and make them look better. Now, I'm just going to convert that to a bitmap for a moment so that I can use the selection tool and just cut off the top section so we have a nice straight edge there. There we go. Let's now move the whole thing up into the top and put it so it is central. I think the midpoint's about there. So put that central inside our area. Um, and then on the right hand side, let's now uh, resize this. It needs to be probably about 45% and uh, pull that back down and put that there. Now, at the moment, you'll see it's in front of the platform and I will want that to go to the back. So uh, one way in which we can uh, send it to the back is by switching over to the code for the lava. And uh, I'm going to just grab the green flag block. So when the game runs, we're going to switch over to looks and just scroll a little bit uh, further down um, and we can grab this block so let's go to front layer but i can switch that to back layer and then if i run the game there you see that the lava is now behind the platform and in fact now i've done that i don't even need this code anymore because it's done uh, so now we've got the uh, the lava there and i'll just rename that sprite lava like that what do we need to do how do we um, manage to get that working so what we need to do uh, is to make sure that um, this sprite here is doing something very similar to what the platform is doing or the portal is doing the portal is forever it is constantly checking to see if it's touching the player and the lava will need to do something very similar now, because the code is going to be very, very similar, we can just simply grab this block of code here, drag it down to the right, and you might just see there the lava sprite just sort of wobbling. Let me just grab the top left corner so you might see that a little bit more clearly. 
you can just see the lava sprite just doing a little bit of a wobble as I move over it. And if I let go, uh, we don't delete or move this code from the portal. But if I click on the lava sprite, you'll see that we now have a complete copy of the code that was in the portal. So we have the when green flag clicked, we have a forever loop here, and we have the question if we're touching the player. Now, the only thing is, if we are touching the player, if the player has touched the um, lava, we don't want to improve the level. We don't want to go up a level, so we don't need that block. We will be broadcasting a message though, but not new level. We want some other message. So let's click new message, and we can simply uh, type anything we like in there, ouch, for example. Uh, so that's the message that the lava will send out to all sprites. Now we need the player to react to that. So the player is the only thing that's going to do anything if, if they touch the lava. The platform is not going to do anything. The portal is not going to do anything. It's the player that needs to react. So if the lava is sending out this message, ouch, we need the player, let's switch over to the player now, to listen out for that message, just like it's listening out for the message new level. So let's go over to uh, events. And when I receive, ouch, what do we want it to do? Well, we actually wanted to go back to the start. So it's a case of duplicating that coordinates block again and putting it down there. If you want to, you can always uh, put something else in, like uh, an ouch, uh, like a sort of a yikes, that was hot. Uh, if we go into looks, we can bring this um, say hello for two seconds block down, uh, pop that in that block there and type ouch for two seconds. So if we uh, run that now, let's go full screen and just run the game. So there's our player running around. And when they hit the lava, ouch, and there they are, they go back to the beginning. So we can see how they can move around the platform fine, but if they touch the lava, they're sent back to the beginning and they yell, ouch. So that's how to create a, um, an enemy of, of some kind of danger, if you like, uh, that's static. So that could be, as I say, lava. It could be a spike sticking out of a wall or the floor. Um, it could be uh, electric cables. I mean, it depends on the theme of your game. Whatever you want your game to be like, whatever theme you're going for, um, then uh, you can think of things that, that match that. What you don't want is a weird mashup of uh, different things that don't seem to really tell a story. Uh, and the idea is this player here is trying to get to the portal. The question is, why? What's the point? Um, every game has a story, has a purpose. So you want to try and, uh, and think about that as you're designing your game. So now what about a, um, an enemy that moves? So first of all, get started with the idea of an enemy that doesn't move, like lava or spikes or whatever. Have a go at that, test it to make sure that it's working. Um, and when it is, we'll look in the next lesson at creating a an enemy that moves around randomly uh, so that that makes it a little bit more of a danger because you don't quite know where they're going to go next. So when you're ready, we'll look at that in the next lesson.